Say you have these two vectors and you just want to know, how much are these pointing in the same direction and can I put a number to it? So that may not seem like a totally natural question for you yet, but come along with me for a few minutes and you'll start to see how useful an answer to this question can be and how the dot product solves this problem you didn't know you had. But first we should make this question more precise. Vectors have two properties, length and direction. But our question is only about directions, so let's forget about the actual length of the vectors for now and replace them with vectors of length 1 that are pointing in the same direction. I'll put a hat on them so that we remember that we've done this. A good way to interpret this question is, how much does one of these vectors overlap with the other? What I mean is this. You can always write that a hat is equal to some part in the direction of b hat, plus a bit that's completely perpendicular to the direction of b. Why? Draw a little triangle like this, and then have these two sides be vectors. They add up to the vector a hat. But this bit is in the same direction as the vector b hat, so you can write it as x times b hat, where x is some number. So a hat is equal to x times b hat, plus something that's perpendicular to b hat. This number x seems like a good answer to our question because it quantifies how much the a direction has of the b direction in it, which could be interpreted as the amount that they're pointing the same way. Still, that may not convince you, so let's do some examples to help see it. Imagine they're pointing exactly the same way. Then a hat equals 1 times b hat, so x is equal to 1. But then as it rotates away, x gets smaller. This makes sense because they're less in the same direction. Then they're totally perpendicular and the number is 0. Again, that makes sense. But do you think that the number should get higher or lower if we keep rotating? Hopefully you said lower since they're pointing even less in the same direction. But to check you get it, here's a question. Suppose that A and B are pointing in exactly opposite directions. What is X in this case? Here are the options and I'd like you to actually pause the video and put your answer in the poll. Some of you might think that the answer to this is so obvious that there's no point actually doing it, but trust me, putting the effort in to answer it in the poll will help this stuff stick in your mind. Hopefully you said the answer is minus 1 because a hat is now minus 1 times b hat. So great, this number x seems to be a good answer to our question because the value of x decreases as a rotates away from b, and so it measures how much they were pointing in the same way. But we need to figure out how to calculate it more easily. At this point, some of you may have already started to feel a bit uneasy. You might be seeing some parallels between this thing that we're doing now and those unit circles with right angle triangles they made you draw in school when you were younger. That's right, there's trigonometry involved. But okay, the trig is not so bad. So I want you to figure out which of these trig formulas is the number x in terms of the angle theta between a and b. Pause the video and figure it out. Hopefully you guys remembered something from those many hours in class talking about right angle triangles and figured out that the answer is cos theta. So we have a nice answer to the question how much do a and b point in the same direction and even a nice formula for the answer, cos theta of the angle between them. But how does this relate to the dot product? The dot product is a function that takes any two vectors, a and b, of these lengths and gives you the amount that they're in the same direction, cos theta, times their lengths. Why tack on the lengths? Doesn't that ruin the dot product's interpretation as being about how much vectors point the same way? Well, we added on because doing that makes the dot product a linear function which I'll explain in a sec, and later on you'll see why that's such a boon. 
But right now I'm going to explain why in an important situation, the dot product is still very much about how much two vectors point the same way. That situation is when you have an orthonormal basis. As we know, a basis is just a bunch of vectors that span a vector space without redundancy. In other words, any vector can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors uniquely. If you're shaky on what any of those terms meant, I explained it in my video on vectors, so go have a look. But okay, assuming you're happy with basis vectors, you'll know that these two vectors are a basis for 2D space. But so are these, and even these. An orthonormal basis has two extra properties. First, each vector in the basis has to have length 1. The second is that every vector in the basis has to be orthogonal to each other. So these things are all orthonormal bases now. By the way, if we had 3D vectors, we'd have three basis vectors, and each one of them would have to be orthogonal to the others. Now, why would you want an orthonormal basis? because they're so much easier to work with. Remember in the vectors video, I said that if you had a 2D basis and you wanted to find out how to write a particular vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors, you could draw this grid and figure it out from that. Well, if you have an orthonormal basis, it's way easier to do than that. I want you guys to figure it out for yourself, but to make it concrete, say you have this orthonormal basis and this vector u, which has this length. You can write that u equals x times v1 plus y times v2. I want you to figure out what x is. In particular, I want you to write what x is in terms of the dot product between u and v1. I'll put the formula up for the dot product here if you want to use it. Pause the video now because I think that this is a really useful question to do yourself first. You don't just want me to tell you the answer without you trying it because you won't have learned anything from that. I really hope you tried it, but the answer is 1. x equals u dot v1. How neat is that? I'll explain why very quickly. The important thing is that the dot product is equal to this in this case because v1 has length 1. Then if you draw this triangle, you'll see that u is this vector in v1's direction plus this vector in v2's. The answer we're looking for is the length of this bit, which you can figure out is u cos theta, which is the dot product in this case. Similarly, you can find out the amount of v2 in u is the dot product of u and v2. So the dot product, in the case of an orthonormal basis, directly tells us how much of each of the basis vectors to include, or in other words, how much u is pointing in each of the basis directions. This obviously generalizes to when you have a very big space where there are many vectors in your orthonormal basis. In every case, it allows you to write u in that basis very neatly. This is, in my opinion, one of the most important properties of the dot product, and part of the reason why it's so useful. But here's another reason it's useful. The dot product is linear. Remember that I said matrices satisfy this equation called linearity. If not, you might want to watch my video on matrices. But it's a similar thing for dot products. If you want to take the dot product between two vectors, but then you realize that you can write one of the vectors as a linear combination of other vectors, like this, then it's the same thing to take the dot product of the original vectors, or to split up the dot product into two parts, like this. Let's talk about why this is and why it's very useful in a second, but first I want you to figure out the answer to this multiple choice question. Say you have two vectors a and b, and you want to know what the length of A projected onto B is. In other words, the length of this. What is it in terms of the dot product? Here are your options. Pause now and figure it out. Okay, well done. You've just done your first homework. 
The reason I got you to do that one first is because you might need it for your second homework question, which is to show that the dot product is linear, with a little bit of help from me. I know earlier I said that I'd show you that the dot product is linear, but it's much better for you to do it yourself in order to really understand it. I know most of you won't be used to doing homework from a YouTube video, but please do try it. It really will help you. Okay, so we want to prove this statement, which we'll simplify to this for now. Now there's probably lots of good ways to prove this, but where I would start is to write u equals a part in the direction of b and a part that's orthogonal, and do the same for v. You'll need to figure out how big the parts in the direction of b are. Once you've done that though, you have all the pieces that you'll need to put together. And I'd love to see your answers in the comments, so please do try it. If you think you have another way to do it, I definitely want to see that too. Here's one last homework question, and it's to fill in what might seem like a glaring omission in this video. Explaining why this other formula for the dot product is equal to the one that I showed you. I'll walk you through proving that, but first I want to point out that this formula isn't actually always correct. It's only correct if the basis that you are using was orthonormal. But let's assume you have some nice orthonormal basis. To prove this formula works, what I want you to do is first prove it for a very simple case. Prove that it works in the case where the vectors are the orthonormal basis vectors themselves. So if you took the dot product of the ith and jth basis vector, then you could use this formula and get the right answer. Once you've proved that, it's up to you to figure out how to prove it for the arbitrary case using the linearity property from the previous question. Give it a go, and even if you get stuck, please write what you did in the comments. Again, you might end up with a different proof from mine, in which case I would love to see that. Now, if you stuck with me all the way to this point, you seem willing to put in some effort to understand the more pure mathematical side of linear algebra. I'm really, really glad because that side of this topic is fantastically rich and beautiful. The next video will explain a bit of that side of this whole thing, so stick around if you'd like to see that. I try upload these videos two weeks apart, but this one took about seven weeks. I've got excuses though. I moved and I've been on some research visits and I've been going to this mini film school thing on the weekends to improve the quality of these videos. All of that is to say I'm really sorry and it will never happen again. Thanks a lot for watching.